Hi, I'm Leif Clayson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect one of these to one of these. In a typical audio processing setup, the input goes to the AGC for leveling, multiband for re equalization, and then onto P control and out. A watermark encoder makes decisions based on the audio it sees to keep the watermarks both as detectable and as inaudible as possible, so ideally it should be last in the chain. However, it will add peaks, so the best place for it is here, right before the final clipper. If the encoder is too early in the chain, the watermarks will both be less robust and more audible because the decisions weren't based on the final audio. The Omnia 9 will let us insert an external device at the correct place in the chain. But there's one more problem we have to solve. The encoder path is going to add delay and we don't know how much. That's going to cause all the meters and instrumentation in the Omnia 9 to go out of sync. And that's no good. We need those to stay in sync so they remain useful. So, in order to find the exact delay and compensate for it, Omnia 9 offers several lineup tools. When we're finished calibrating, we'll flick the switch to put the watermark on the air, and we'll have a single repeat of audio exactly as long as the watermark path delay. That's it. Let's do it. I've already connected cables between the digital aux I.O. of the Omnia 9 and the I.O. of the watermark encoder. So, we need to send the pre-final audio to the aux output. We do that in System, I.O. Options, Main Outputs by selecting FM Pre-Final left right for the aux output. The pre-final output already has headroom built in, so we don't need any extra attenuation here, so let's turn it all the way up to zero. Then we go to FM Options and Insert. The return is coming from aux digital. Good. We now see the send and the return level, but they seem to have different levels. Hmm, this might possibly have something to do with the attenuation I accidentally on purpose dialed into the watermark encoder earlier. Attenuation, you say? Well, that's just silly. Watermark encoders don't have that. Well, full disclosure, I don't actually own a Nielsen PPM encoder. I do, however, happen to have a linear acoustic Aero 100, which is a TV processor, also by yours truly. It includes watermark encoders both from Nielsen and Verens. So, attenuation. I seem to be saying that word a lot lately. The first thing we need to do now is to turn on the lineup tone. That looks like we're losing 2.5 dBs of level somewhere. We can fix that with input gain, but NF Remote won't let us look at that page while also looking at this level readout. It will, however, let us run another copy. So we go to Home, System, I.O. Options, and then Source Adjustment. We need some gain on that input. There. Now it's time to set Insert Mode to Blips, so we can start tuning the delay. Notice how we're not hearing anything different yet? We're listening to the headphone output. We're hearing what's on the air. And as I mentioned earlier, the lineup is done on a separate path, which doesn't affect the on-air audio at all. So, to hear the lineup tones, we look in miscellaneous and select the Insert Null Patch Point. And we're now hearing a cacophony of blips. Let's adjust the delay until they start converging. Now at this point, we're close enough to switch to noise, which makes it much easier to hear which way to adjust. Hey, by the way, if you've ever wondered what comb filtering means, this would be it. Well, hello. I know that sound. Once the noise nulls out, all that remains is whatever the watermark encoder has added. If this is the first time you're hearing it, I do apologize. Once you hear it, you can't really unhear it. Now, all we have to do is to set the insert mode to on and the watermark encoder is instantly on the air. The insert null patch point remains active, so we're currently hearing the watermark on top of almost perfectly nulled music. Hey, since we're here, we might as well check out what the different watermarks sound like. Nielsen actually has three different kinds, but two of them are exclusive to TV. Here's N2. And uh, here's N6. You can also turn them all on at the same time. 
They also have a competitor in TV. Here's what they sound like. Hmm, that's not bad actually. Yeah, okay. Now we'll set the headphone output back to MPX output so we can hear what our on-air feed really sounds like. That's pretty amazing actually. They're adding all that and it sounds the same, at least in this setup. Right before the final clipper is indeed the best place to watermark. Notice how all the meters are still in perfect sync now despite the added delay. At this point there's only one thing left to do. If we're running HD or DAB and want the watermark also on the digital feed, we'll need to set the HD cross feed to use the FM audio. This way the HD path will use the audio right after the insert return, which then includes the watermark. And that's the way the square wave tapers. I'm Leif Clayson. For more information, please visit omniaaudio.com. Thank you very much for watching.